23. So we're going to start in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 13. Here we go. And three of the 30 chief men went down and came about the harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam, when a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Raphaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. So they're in his hometown, right? And David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Then the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and carried and brought it to David. But he would not drink of it. He poured it out to the Lord and said, Far be it for me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their own lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. So there may be another version of this uh, in Scripture. I can't remember off the top of my head, but like it's just so funny to me. that like These mighty men, they go and they battle basically to get to this well, right? Mm-hmm. Surely they're encountering people. They're like killing these Philistines, like getting to the well, right? Because mm-hmm. David, this is his hometown. It's Bethlehem. Like It's the place where he's from, right? Um, and now these men are going back to get this well water that he so longingly wants, Mm -hmm. right? It's not necessarily that he's dying of thirst or that like, he just like can't handle what's going on, but he just wants water from this well because he's like, Oh, I wish that we had basically control over it again. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then they come back and he pours out the water because he's like, I I can't drink this. Like, (laughs) like you guys almost, you guys like, risk your lives to go do that. Like that you, you did all these different things. Like, you know, I, I just can't. So he pours it out on the ground. He ends up not drinking it after all that struggle of like going to get that, going behind enemy lines, going yeah. to this well and getting this, this water. Right. Yeah. Um, but the mighty men overall are really, really interesting. So let me read some of their names and, um, and kind of talk through this a little bit. So, uh, we go through a lot of them. And in, in this passage in chapter 23, it actually talks about many, many, many of the, the mighty men here uh, out of the 32, I think there are, or 37, sorry, in all. Um, but we'll read the very end of it. So verse uh, 34. So uh, Eliph- Eliphilet, the son of Ahisabai and, and Machai, Aliam, the son, the son of uh, Ethophiel and Gilo, Hezro of, uh, Can- of Carmel, Pariah of the Arbite, Egal the son of Nathan, of, Zo- of Zobah, Bani the Gadiite. And we go through all these. It kind of tells little stories about who they were and what they did. And so near the end here, it's just kind of naming them off and off and off, right? But then we get to verse 39, and it says Uriah the Hittite, right? 37 in all. And so I just love not only the mighty men, because it's like hilarious stories, like throughout all this stuff, like this band of brothers that is just like going and killing all these people and doing these crazy things. Like I said, like Samson level activities. Right. Um, and, and this whole chapter is kind of talking about what they've done and the feats that they've taken on. Um, but this also gives us a connection point to something that happened earlier in second Samuel. Now this is like the end of David's life. Like he's basically, dead here like this is going back and telling other stories from the time when he was with the mighty men Mm -hmm. right but then in chapter 11 is where it actually talks about david and bathsheba right and so uriah the hittite is bathsheba's husband right and so one of the things that really interests me is like this relationship between david and uriah because Mm -hmm. uriah is not just like this random guy i know like sometimes when we teach this story of david and bathsheba we have this uh, mentality of like, oh, he's just this random peasant that's part of the the kingdom of Israel, right? And Mm -hmm. and David's like longing for his wife, and so he kills the guy. But it's much, much worse than that. Like, it's not just some random stranger that he kills, right? Mm -hmm. That he sends off to battle in the front lines. He sends one of his best friends, one of the people that protected him in the wilderness, right? Like, this is a, like a brother to him, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, like, it's it's so crazy to me when I think about that relationship overall. It's like David not only killed one of his own, but it was also someone that he knew very well. He had to have. Like, he traveled with him. He was protected by him. He was part of his crew. Like, you know, thir- out of 30 guys, like, you're going to get to know all those 30 guys pretty darn well, especially mm-hmm. if you're traveling with them in the wilderness and you're, you're in this very serious situation. Mm-hmm. And so he actually kills you know, what I would consider like a best friend, you know? Um, 
And so that story becomes even more complicated. Like, how did Bathsheba fit into this? And, you know, was David there at their wedding? Like, you know, what happened between all these different things that were that were going on? Mm-hmm. Um, and then how did it become that, you know, he marries Bathsheba and all this other stuff happens later on, too? Like, how does that play out? It's so complicated to me, yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely. So what do you think about the Mighty Men? What do you think about uh, this whole situation, the connection to Uriah, all that kind of stuff? If you want to see us do more podcasts like this, then we could really use your help. Either subscribe, follow, or share with a friend. And on the podcast platforms, rate us five stars. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, they were pretty cool. Um, there was this guy, Benaya. It, oh, it's right there. Uh, Benaya killed two sons. Oh, wait. Uh, went down into the pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. Yeah. Like, why <laughs> Why is it that in there? Because it's epic. I know. <laughs> I love it when... Uh, when the Bible like specifies things because it's important, right? Yeah. Like there has to be more of a reason why it's in there. It's not like happenstance or random, like right. it, everything is in there for a reason. So, um, yeah. And then the whole Uriah and Bathsheba thing. Um, yeah, it's definitely way more complicated than, than we think it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I often think from, from the three different perspectives, right? Mm-hmm. Like you've got David. Okay. He's acting out of lust and then he's trying to cover up his sin. Like you, you kind of get that from scripture, but then you don't really get to think too much about Uriah's point of view or Bathsheba's point of view. And so like, I like thinking through those lenses, you know, of like Uriah is, is really good friends with David. Like he, he probably has known him since and before. And he's an honorable man. Right. Like right. at a time that everybody's out um in war like yep. the like kings are out to war like it yeah. specifically says that like at a time when kings are out to war right, like right. david stayed behind yeah. right like sin number 1 right like not lot li- living up to your um to your title almost um and he calls him back and he's and he's honorable. He's like, no, I'm not going to go. How am I, who am I to go sleep with my wife mm. when our, our, our men are out there in battle and, right. and, and dying. Right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And through all that, right. Like Uriah is very honorable and mm-hmm. he's very, you know, gracious to David, even, even if David is doing the wrong things, like you're saying, like yeah. he stayed home from battle. Uriah is like, no, I'm, I'm going to go back out there. I'm going to do what I need to do. You mm-hmm. know? Um, in some ways being way more honorable, honorable than David. And Mm -hmm. so it's like, it's crazy to think about that, um, that connection. And then even more complicated is Bathsheba for me, because it's like, you were married to this guy who you obviously loved and were with or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. and then the King, you know, intercepts you, (laughs) you know, and is taking you in. Like, was she, obviously she's partial in that. Like, it doesn't say that David, um, you know, took advantage of her. It says that they, were together, right? Mm -hmm. So that David took advantage of her in the sense that he was like an authority figure. Yes. But he didn't like rape her. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, like in, in that sense, like she must've been culpable in some, in some sense, maybe she was missing Uriah. Maybe she was lonely. Maybe it's like a military wife thing, you know, like that happens a lot of times. And, um, and so it seems like a normal response for her, but also it just becomes more and more and more complicated. Like, was she trying to convince Uriah to sleep with her as well? Or was this something that she was like really against when David came and what happened when the kid dies, right? Like they have this kid together, Mm -hmm. her and David, Mm -hmm. and then the kid dies, um, shortly after it's born and and so then she has to go through that whole grieving process and then they get married and then everything else happens and solomon comes and then the craziness of all david's kids like there's so much that we don't know about the situations like that right Mm -hmm. but it all stems back to this earlier life that david had like he went through so many of these different stages from from boyhood at david and goliath to you know being a young man and, and and killing all these people and being part of wars and stuff and saul has killed his thousands but david has killed his tens thousands right like it's it, and then he kind of grows up more and more and more and he becomes king and then he's you know doing all these different things right all throughout his life it's like he has all these different stages and obviously this is the one that we think of that is like the worst of the worst right this is where he really makes his big mistakes um but we we don't naturally think about those other relationships that are kind of alongside that as well you mm-hmm. know um 
Yeah, I, I just thought that was really interesting. I love the stories of the Mighty Men overall. The, the little, you know, five-year-old boy in me is like, <laughs> yeah, get him, you know, sort of like <laughs> mentality. Um, there was even a comic book at one point that I that I read or saw um, of the Mighty Men, which is really, really cool as well. Really? Um, but I would love to see like a series about them. That would be, that'd that be would amazing. Be cool. <laughs> like a chosen level series about the, the Mighty Men would be epic, bro. Yeah. That'd be so, so cool. If you want to check out this full episode, you can do that on patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is the the best way to help us to support what we're doing here on the Better Not Easy channel. Thank you very much. So just that following Jesus is better not easy.